Howdy folks, it's me, Manic Mark, coming to you from the bunker system. It's record day today, but it's pretty... It's this many records. Starting all over again. Hey, it's me, Manic Mark, coming to you from the bunker system. What's going on today? It's record day. I just have a few records. Not very good. Not very good record day. I mean, there's a few records, but there weren't many records. It's not the quantity, it's the quality. I've been thinking a lot about heroes and who we look up to, who we're told to hold in high esteem as children we grow up. And for me, it it's normally I guess it depends on how, whatever circles you run in when you grow up. But generally it's a precedent. They always hold up a precedent. Like, for me, I carried a quote. And I don't think, I don't even know, I don't have my wallet with me, but I carried a quote. There's fuzzy stuff on the fist of antisocial injustice. Where did that come from? I've got to get into that because then I'll ruin the next video. I'm not going to cut the part out where I mentioned the book. But, it doesn't have anything with that book. It has, I'm cutting all that out. You can hold anybody you want up to up as a person that you look up to. But for me, it, it, it used to be, it, it could have been a political figure like Washington or Abraham Lincoln or Eisenhower. Or, or it could have been a general like Patton. They're problems. I'm cutting it all out. This is so chopped up and convoluted. I mean... Hey, I'm breaking into the, the video with the different... I needed to... I needed to approach my question about heroes a little bit different, I think. Because I realized that I had problems with my thinking. Imagine that. But first, I wanted to apologize for calling artists that paint with oils mentally ill. That was a joke. It was based on how can anybody focus and spend time waiting for oil paint to dry. It's maddening. And I'm, I'm, look, I paint on cardboard. I'm, I'm out of my mind. And look what I was doing. Paint aliens with double-headed penises. Come on, really. Don't take me seriously when I say stuff. Sometimes it just comes out and it's not right. I'm, I apologize to oil painters all over the world for my insensitivity. I like oil painters. Frank Rosetta painted with oils. Look at his work. It's amazing. Or was that temper paint? I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Um, heroes. Am I back to that? Oh, i got to talk about... No, I don't want to talk about that because it's going to make this video too long. I think the way I should approach the hero thing is just back up and say, for a long time I carried a quote from Pat in my wallet, okay? So I held Patton, General Patton, World War II, in high esteem. But the problem is, as you read more and more about a certain person, because I read so much about World War II history, that flaws start to float to the surface. And, and, and while, because, you know, it's like we build these myths up around people, and we admire the myth, and then, we, then there's the quote, and we hold that, I think it just, it's just, it's distorts. And I don't, and I was going to say, who do I should, that's why I was going to back up, because they started going to the same thing again, and just say, who, who are your heroes? Who do you hold up in, in high esteem, historical figure, modern figure, figure, doesn't matter, and, and, and why? And should you? I mean, you should think about it before you say that you do, because, any, it's. I think it's just. It, it, how, I don't know. For me, it's be very difficult for me to hold up. Once you strip away everything else and you get down to the thing that you like about them, or the the myth built up around the thing that you like, then you could say, "Oh, I love this person because of this thing." But should you just say, "I love this thing that this person did," rather than this person? I put them on a platform. I'm, I, see, I think that gets us in trouble. So we put these people on a platform, and maybe they did one good thing, but maybe they're doing a lot of stuff that isn't so good, and you want to be reserved in your 
in your judgment and building your own myth around these people based on these singular things that they did. Because I was going to say scientists, for me, I don't even have a person. I'm not going to go into it. I was going to say, as a group, scientists impress me that the thing that they're doing, investigating, researching, or creating, or inventing, can benefit mankind or destroy it. You know what I'm saying? And that's a good thing, like all groups of people. So is there, is there one person? I, I just don't. I don't have one person. It's really difficult for me to hold, hold up one person um, because of the because of what I just went into. But maybe you have have a person, and, and I'm, I've, I missed the boat, and I don't know that that person. And because I was going to say, if if you if you like, well, you can. I'm not going to mention any names, but I think any um, in, big time inventor or business type, there's all this political stuff going in the background. There's backstabbing and people are, you know, driving people out of business and people are hiring kids to make, you know, slave labor to make stuff. There's all sorts of stuff, backstories to any, anything, you know. And if you go and probably look at any politician, you can find things that they did do that you, you would never do or want to see anybody do. But that's always pushed to the back because of these other great things that they did. It's just highly confusing. So I just go back to the thing where maybe it's not a good idea to hold any one individual up. Put them on a pedestal. And we do that. Every, every four years we put somebody on a pedestal and elect them. And then we're always surprised at what, at what happened. You know, because we're, we're putting these myths that they're selling you're stripping down away everything else and you're focusing on that self-interest and that myth that you've created and here's what what should I do the mark of the beast did I, they say that the mark of the beast is still it's still let's just go right into the records I decided to go and I decided to try another Hugo winter halter record because I found one or two that actually we're good. And this is 1964. There's a cover of Java and Shangri-La on this. I'm hoping it'll be as good as the covers of whatever the last one I got, when I don't remember. And speaking of covers, David Carroll, a very dull, boring cover on Mercury, but David covers Telstar. I had to, I had to just take a chance to listen to David's cover of Telstar and Limbo Rock of all things for God's sakes. The Three Sons. This is on the cheap budget label Golden Tone. It's a reissue of The Three Sons in Orbit. That was kind of curious. I don't know if I have The Three Sons in Orbit, but now I have it as a reissue. And this was weird. Remember a couple weeks ago I found this Bill Bailey album autographed on the back? The last one was autographed too, but this is a mini fresh copy. I don't think the last one was as nice as this. But what are the chances in two completely different thrift stores in, in the course of two weeks that I would find a Caribbean cruise lounge, lounge record like this? I, that's just weird. The brass ring. The brass ring from the 60s. Speaking of weird, it's the musical body. The musical body with Joanne. There's Joanne on the back there, musical body poses. It's sealed. Not that that makes a damn bit of difference <laughs> in this case. Music by Bill Hampton. There's somebody wrote music for this and they and they, and they gave themselves credit. And last but not least, at half price books, it kind of perked me up a little bit. It's one of those things I go on about, but I don't know if it's going to be worth anything. But look at this cover. The Phantom of the Organ. Eric lives. I think Eric is Vern Langdon. He's noted on the back as the producer. Liner notes are by Forrest J. Ackerman. I just noticed that. Forrest J. Ackerman was, of course, was the, 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 the man behind Famous Monsters of Filmland. He wrote the notes for this record, but Vern Langdon is credited with um, writing all of the songs with names such as Horror of Eric, Depression, Symphony of Death, Dimension Macabre, The Devil's Love, 
sound trip through the catacombs and echoes of the organ. I have high hopes for this. Two dollars. It was in the easy listening section. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to play a sample from that record. Play the tiki drummer. It's, I don't know if it's a good idea to, now to hold anybody up in high esteem. I was going to say scientists, because scientists would save the world. If anybody's going to save the world, it's not politicians, it's not generals, it's not religious figures, it's scientists. Except for the scientists that developed the H-bomb, then laser beam whack, death rays. Laser beam death rays. Laser beams are death rays, and death rays are laser beams. What other kind of death ray could you have that wasn't a laser beam? I don't know. Play the song. <laughs> 